Hey guys, we're closing out our series on prayer this week, um, or at least the teaching portion of that series. And two weeks from now, we will be, instead of having a lesson or discussion groups, we're going to be praying uh, down here on Sunday mornings together. Um, so this last week, I'm going to give five rules to prayer, which are John Calvin's rules. They're not my own, but I'll be presenting them and elaborating on them. Um, and they're really supposed to just be guidelines and hopefully helpful steps to just put students on the right track as we move into praying, um, actually practicing this and disciplining ourselves for this next week. Um, so uh, that'll be my lesson. And uh, as you go into discussion groups, the first two questions are just simple based off of that. The first one is to just ask what they think about those five rules, which one they think uh, are helpful, which ones they may have found a little surprising, which ones maybe um, do we generally need to work on, um, and things like that. So just get their feedback from the lesson, make sure they're internalizing things. Uh, second question is just to ask if they've heard other rules or guidelines or steps for prayer before, if they've heard kind of series like this before. Are those helpful? Are they unhelpful? Are there some that are helpful and some that aren't? Uh, so allow students to just elaborate on that, what they've heard before, what they've found helpful, what they don't. Uh, and so maybe they can share things that are helpful with the group that we haven't covered um, or uh, share how some things may be too restrictive and actually uh, kind of counterproductive. I'm sure um, at least the high school group will have some thoughts on that. Um, and then you're going to have a brief teaching point this week like you did last week. Um, there's one more guideline that I want students to have that I won't cover in those five rules, and that is that prayer should always begin with the Word of God. Um, one of the cool quotes I read in preparation for this series is that prayer is a con continuing a conversation that God started in His Word. So we're continuing a conversation that God initiated with us through uh, Scripture. And so as we pray, um, our prayers should either be generally or specifically connected to God's Word. By generally, we mean uh, we're just taking our general knowledge of God's Word, His characteristics, His attributes, His desires. We take those with us into prayer, things that we already know about God from His Word. That's where we've learned them, but um, they may not be specifically tied to an individual passage or something like that. Uh, specifically is uh, where it is tied specifically to a verse, specific, specifically to a passage of Scripture. Um, and so we want our prayers to either be generally connected to the Word of God or specifically connected. Uh, so that's a brief teaching point. Throw that out quickly. Um, and then ask them which one of those two categories, general or specific, is more helpful. Which one do they think they would use more? Which one do they think they use more already? Um, and get their thoughts on that. Um, my uh, opinion and thoughts are there for you. I think either one, or actually both of them are useful. Both of us, all, both of them should be used by all Christians um, at varying points uh, in their prayer lives. Uh, I think in general, probably the more advanced we are in knowing and understanding and having internalized God's Word, uh, the more fruitful and valuable those general um connections to scripture become and you want to be careful how to present this but the uh, the less advanced we are in really knowing and internalizing and have meditated on and memorized scripture um, the more we may want to lean towards specific passages specific verses uh, to guide us and that's probably not where all of our students are but um, probably where most of them are and that's uh, mostly because of age, and so uh, that's not like they've done anything wrong, but that may be a, a more helpful model for them as they begin to pray, and we're going to use that a lot um, as we pray throughout the semester. So question number four, ask what are the benefits of praying in close connection with God's Word? What, what does that bring us that's valuable? And then on the other hand, what problems or blind spots in our prayer lives might that cover up? And I've listed a couple down there for you. Um, a big complaint, especially when we're learning how to pray, is that we just end up praying the same things over and over and over. If we pray through God's Word, um, we get a lot more variety in what we're praying about. 
Uh, we also get variety, that second point, in the type of prayer we're bringing. Usually we just lean towards petition, bringing our requests before God, uh, which is something that we should do, but we, we struggle more with areas of confession and thanksgiving and uh, even intercession and things like that. And as we, again, pray in connection to God's word, that uh, brings some variety to the types of prayer we bring. Um, it can protect us against praying for the wrong things. That's something we talked about last week. If we're connecting it to God's word, to his will and his desires, that protects us against just praying for what we want. It protects us against just praying for things that would make our lives easier and better. Um, and then the last one, um, if we pray in connection with God's word, it helps us, I think, to move scripture from our head down to our heart. Uh, you can do that without prayer um, in some instances uh, as you read through the word of God and the, the spirit moves in that uh, you can and hopefully are taking in knowledge and interpretation uh, of scripture while also internalizing that and uh, feeling that that passion in your hearts uh, but I think prayer helps move that along um, we take what we already know about God in our heads and we move it into our, our hearts our desires and our passions um, as we pray um, question number five, you're going to just give a little bit of a guide of how this actually works. What should this look like? We're going to, again, do this throughout the semester. So this is just a little tutorial to help students. Um, I've got some guidelines there again. We don't necessarily, uh, while we can quote the verse back to God, that's completely appropriate. We don't want to just uh, read a verse of scripture and then repeat it back to God. Um, we want to interpret that scripture. This is where interpretation and prayer kind of merge together. So we're kind of drawing out the implications uh, and the meaning of that scripture as we're uh, reading. And then as we move into prayer, we want to take that with us. So we're not just repeating the verse. We're talking about the implications of that verse and what that verse means. And uh, if that's something that we struggle with, we may be moved into confession. And if that's something that um, we're uh, desiring in our lives after we confess we may say God would you help me to bring this about in my lives and and some scripture may uh, praise be praising God and so you can repeat that scripture back to God and praise him for that and then you want to move that that's the the letter C here we want to make things personal as we pray and so we don't want to just pray in generalities we talked about that week one um, as we're in personal prayer and communication with God uh, we're taking general things from Scripture, so um, God is forgiving, and we're making that more personal. God has forgiven me for this and this and this, and uh, I'm thankful for that. And so we're, we're taking what's general in the Word, and we're moving it into uh, our present-day lives and, and uh, our personal situations. Um, and then I want us to do that um, through two examples. So I want... Uh, as leaders for us to um, take one scripture and do that and then students can uh, will give them one and ask you know how would you pray through this passage what are things that you could draw out to actually pray and this is um, somewhat of a limited exercise because like we just talked about we want these prayers to be personal when we're just praying between uh, ourselves and God um, and there's a limit to that uh, if we're going to share it with the whole group. Um, but we want to, I think, give an example of students, uh, two students, for how this can look. So uh, Psalm 46, verse 1 and 2 is what I have listed for you guys. And so you'll read that as a group and then talk about, man, what are some things that we can draw out from this? And you guys can think of your own implications. You don't have to milk everything from the passage. Uh, it says, God is our refuge and strength. He's an ever-present help, ever help in times of trouble. Therefore, we do not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. And so we can be moved a lot of different ways in this passage. When we see that God is our refuge, we may be convicted that we uh, take refuge in other things, uh, in our comforts, in our money, in our talents and abilities. And we may say, God, help me to use you more uh, as uh, as a refuge, as a, something that I cling on to when things are difficult. Help, uh, help me to run to you when things are not going well rather than to other things. 
or we may have just experienced um, a difficult time in our lives where we uh, were able to cling to God uh, through that situation. And so we also could be moved to thanksgiving and say, God, thank you um, for being my refuge and my strength and my rock through this situation that I couldn't have handled uh, on, on my own. And we can see he's never ha- present help in time of trouble. Thank you that um, you're the same God today as you were when this psalm was written. You're an ever-present help, you're a continual help. And so you've helped me in the past, you're helping me today, and I, I know that you'll be there in the future. Um, again, same thing with uh, the command or the, the idea that we shouldn't fear. Um, could be moved different ways. Uh, we may be convicted to confess to God, I'm sorry for how fearful I am that I don't lean on you as my rock and my refuge, uh, that I'm worried, that I'm anxious, that I'm fearful of things in my life. Help me to uh, be captivated by your greatness, by your goodness, by your strength, by your personal love for me, and help that to move me to a place where I trust you and where I'm not fearful, where I'm not nervous, where I'm not anxious about things in the future. Um, So things like this, again, you don't have to um, draw out everything from this passage, but you do want to uh, just show how that would work more so than just repeating these two verses back to God. How do we take the truths that we see here, the commands that we see here, um, and move them into uh, a prayer for God? And so then you're going to give them Philippians 4, 4 through 7, um, and ask them the same thing. How are you, and try to make several people participate. There's lots of things that you can draw out. And again, we want to read passages and be moved um, in accord with our personal lives, right? So some of us may be good at some things. Some of us may struggle at some things. And so when we read about that, we may be moved into confession, whereas other people may be moved into um, thanksgiving. Um but we want to draw out implications from these passages and see how they can move from just reading into an actual prayer. Uh, Give just a brief little model for students uh, of what that looks like. Uh, And then the last question, question six, is just a review, and this is a great step to move from this week into next Sunday where we're actually praying. Um, And I want um, a good amount of students to participate in this question. I would encourage them all to at least uh, come up with an answer and hopefully write it down. Uh, So you're just going to ask, what are one or two things uh, that you can take away from this three-week series that we just did that are going to help you uh, pray this semester as we practice and discipline prayer uh, down here? What are some things that you can take that will help guide your prayers, that will shape your prayers, things that you um, know that you struggle with that you want to work on this semester? Um, and I will have, um, I'll give you guys a note sheet from all three of the weeks so that you can have just a brief outline of what we've talked about. Encourage students, the ones that keep up with their notes, to look back over the three weeks. Um, if they're not coming up with something in their heads, uh, you may have to give a brief review. Um, but again, try to push several students to answer this question out loud and challenge all of them to think of one or two things and have them write that down in on the back of their note sheet, uh, on in a journal, something that they can then bring next week and say, these are the things I really want to focus and work on today. These are the ways I want to um, kind of change what I typically do in prayer. Uh, so this is just a, that last question is just a practical step as we um, move from teaching into actually practicing. We want them to take some things that we've just learned and actually work them out and practice them as we um come before the Lord in prayer uh, two Sundays from now. So let me know if you guys have any questions. I will see you guys on Sunday.